The Franks were a Germanic people living on the east bank of the Lower Rhine River in around the 3rd century. They originated long before France became a united nation, but they were instrumental to its formation. Join us in a countdown of seven ways the Franks helped the French. Number seven, they helped to end the Roman rule of Gaul. The Franks had a complicated relationship with the Romans in that they were resistant to them yet integrated into their culture. Originally, the Franks were split into three politically independent groups, the Salians, the Chani, and the Viparians. The first mention of the Franks appears around 257 CE, when they were mentioned as enemies of Rome. In roughly 288 CE, the Roman Empire launched a military campaign against the Franks. The Salians surrendered and became the first Germanic tribe to settle within the Roman Empire. They integrated extremely well, and soon Frankish kingdoms were established inside the Roman Empire in areas of modern-day France, Belgium, and Germany. During the reign of Clodio the Longhaired, circa 395 to 448, the Roman army left the area to fight the Visigoths, and Clodio took control of the region, establishing his capital at Tournai. Despite this takeover, things appeared to remain amicable between the Franks and the Romans, as Clodio's grandson, Childric, helped the Romans fight the Visigoths. During this time, the Franks continued to have a mixed relationship with the Romans. Some raided Roman territories, while others fought in their army. Childric's son, Clovis, went on to conquer the neighboring tribes, essentially uniting the Franks and establishing himself as their king. He then continued to expand his territory, taking advantage of the power vacuum left by the collapse of the Roman Empire. He fought and defeated the last Roman official in Gaul as well as the Visigoths in the southwest of the region. Clovis became the first king of the Franks. While most of the Franks were pagan, Clovis had converted to Christianity at his wife's insistence. He used this to ingratiate himself with the Gallo-Roman population, which was largely Christian since it had been the official state religion of the Romans since the 4th century CE. The heavy Roman influence in the area meant that French remained a Latin-based language rather than becoming Germanic under the rule of the Franks. Number 6. They Helped Unite Gaul Around the 5th century CE, Frankish tribes had established themselves as a major power in Gaul. The Repuarian settled near modern-day Cologne in the Middle Rhine and along the Moselle and Meuse rivers. The Salian Franks made the coastal region their home. Other Germanic tribes, including the Jutes, Saxons, and Angles, occupied the coast by the North Sea and were spreading into England. Clovis, who had eliminated the last vestiges of Roman power from Gaul, continued to expand the Frankish territory and unite northern Gaul under his leadership. He established Paris as his capital and ruled a large area, including Cologne, the region between the Seine and the Loire, Aquitaine, and the historical province of Novum Populania. When Clovis died in 511, he split his kingdom between his four sons. The divisions were not clearly defined, and the area was divided according to equal quantities of revenue from tax and trade. Despite the split, the brothers continued to expand their territory. There was much internal fighting, but soon the Franks, in one form or another, ruled all of northern and southwestern Gaul. They were unable to take Septimania, which remained in the hands of the Visigoths, and areas of Amerika, which was being colonized by the British at the time. By 561, the Frankish kingdom had become the most powerful state in Western Europe, when it was split again into four when Clotar I divided the kingdom between his sons. The influence and unity of the Frankish Empire waxed and waned until Charlemagne, who reunited the Frankish kingdom under his sole authority and was made the first Holy Roman Emperor due to his power and influence. Number 5. They Helped Expel the Visigoths from Gaul The Visigoths were one of the Germanic people to spread throughout Europe during the pre-medieval Roman power decline. Throughout the 4th century, they raided Roman territories and established kingdoms in Gaul and Spain, Hispania. Under the Visigoth king Euric, their territory in France stretched from the Loire to the Pyrenees and the Lower Rhine. However, in 507, Euric's son Alaric II was defeated by Clovis at the Battle of Vouillet near Poitiers. This defeat cost the Visigoths nearly all of their Gallic territories, and they were pushed back into Spain, where they already had formed a foothold. The exception to this expulsion was Septimania, a historical kingdom located along the coast from the Rhone to the Pyrenees. There, the Visigoth capital was Narbonne, 
which remained the last vestiges of the Visigoth kingdom in Gaul, despite coming under Muslim control in 711. In 759, Septimania was finally amalgamated into Frankish territory when the inhabitants of Narbonne handed the city over to the Frankish king Pepin III. Number 4. Charlemagne helped to reform the country. When Charlemagne took over the Frankish kingdom, it was a divided realm. The expansion of the Franks had resulted in an empire comprised of a diverse range of peoples that were difficult to rule with any unity. Adding to this was the Frankish custom that split the kingdom between the king's sons. Charlemagne did partake in this tradition as he and his brother received a portion of the domain. When Charlemagne died, his empire was then divided among his sons. However, his absolute rule paved the way for many reforms. Charlemagne was from a new line of rulers, the Pepinids, later called the Carolingians after Charlemagne. These new Frankish kings had taken over from the Merovingians and had established their dynasty as ruling by the grace of God, which the medieval European monarchs would echo in years to come. Because of this, a new burden fell on the king, that of religious reform. Charlemagne was instrumental in shaping the religious and political institutions of France and beyond. In addition, he brought forth a cultural renaissance, encouraging education and the arts and laying the foundation for future cultural reformations. He also encouraged manorialism as a system of agriculture, in which peasants lived on and worked their lord's land, essentially renting it from them in exchange for services and dues. This system led the lords to implement social and political order on their land, stimulating economic growth. Not to mention the fact that Charlemagne revived the Roman Empire in the West, challenging the Byzantine Empire and becoming the first Holy Roman Emperor. Number 3. They helped develop the culture of the Middle Ages When people think of medieval Europe, the first thing that comes to mind is probably knights, castles, and the feudal system. Given everything else on this list, it's perhaps not surprising that the Franks established most of these traditions in Europe. While they did not invent castles, they, along with the Normans, popularized the use of stone fortresses, but the idea was probably introduced to Europe by the Muslims in Spain. There is no doubt that the Franks introduced the concept of knights. The first European knights appeared during the reign of Charlemagne, and from there they developed their own class. Originally, knights were cavalrymen in the Frankish army. Their heavy armor and war horses made them one of the army's most powerful units but the expense involved meant that only the wealthy could afford to be a knight. Eventually, knights became a class of their own throughout Europe and developed the code of chivalry, knightly behavior, and religious connotations during the Crusades. The feudal system was directly linked to the institution of knighthood, as in return for their pledge to fight for the king, a knight would receive a parcel of land, known as a fife. Powerful lords could also be given land in return for their support and loyalty. Anyone who happened to live on this land was at once under the command and, to a lesser extent, protection of their new lord. The widespread adoption of Frankish customs demonstrates the Franks' influence on France and the entirety of medieval Europe. Number 2. They provided the first royal dynasty of France While there is some dispute about when France was created versus the first rulers of the area, many agree the Merovingians were the first royal house of France. Named after an obscure Frankish ruler in the 5th century named Merovec, the dynasty included Childeric and Clovis. Eventually, their power waned until their dynasty ended when Pepin III deposed Childeric III in 750, replacing the Merovingian dynasty with the Carolingian. The numbering of the later French royals starts with Louis I. Louis was also Frankish and the son of Charlemagne. He inherited the part of the Frankish Empire that most closely resembles modern-day France. However, Louis I's realm was much larger than France is today and included the area in which Hamburg and Barcelona now stand. In 781, Louis became King of Aquitaine and became the Holy Roman Emperor in 814. Another Frank who could also be viewed as the first French king is Hugh Capet. Capet was the first of the Capetian dynasty, which ruled France through a direct line of 14 kings. Whichever line of kings you look at, the French royalty came directly from the Franks. Number 1. They created modern France Yep, that's right. If it wasn't obvious by now, technically, the French are the Franks. Just as the English are named after the Angles, the French take their name from the Franks. 
The Celtic area of modern-day France was loosely defined as Gaul by the Romans, but consisted of individual tribes rather than one cohesive nation. This division changed when the Franks unified Gaul under their rule, taking advantage of the decline of the Roman Empire. The Franks subdued other tribes in the area, including the heavily Romanized Celts and the other Germanic tribes trying to assert dominance. While the Franks dominated the political sphere, many historians now think that the number of Franks that invaded was exaggerated, mainly because Gaul remained thoroughly Romanized despite the Germanic influence. Compared to Britain, which rejected any culture left by the Romans and developed a Germanic language based on that of the Angles, Jutes, and Saxons, the French remained a Romance language based on Latin. That is, apart from Breton, which persists as one of the six Celtic languages still spoken today. However, the Frankish influence on the French language can still be heard if you listen carefully enough. French adopted many Frankish words, and the Germanic language has markedly affected the phonetics and stress systems in how French is spoken. The continuation of a Romanized culture was aided by the Franks, who at least partially assimilated into the Roman culture themselves. When the Franks started to assert dominance over Gaul, they had the sense to become Christianized and thus acceptable to the Romanized Gauls, even though the majority of the Frankish population kept their pagan traditions. The Franks continued to dominate power in Gaul and the surrounding areas until the eventual formation of France as we know it today. So ultimately, the Franks helped France by turning it into a unified and politically identifiable country. Did you agree with our picks of seven ways the Franks helped France? If you know of any other ways the Franks influenced France, let us know in the comments below. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Franks, check out our book, The History of the Franks, a captivating guide to a group of Germanic peoples who invaded the Western Roman Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.